Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a beautiful brand new day and welcome to Earth's Ascension with Ortrune and Carl Franklin. Good morning, Franklins. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It's really good to be uh, with you again. And uh, we have a, I think it's going to be quite an interesting show today, and it's going to be on what is the fourth dimension. And I know we've spoken about what the fourth dimension is before, that it is that time of change, but there's much more to the fourth dimension than just this thing of saying it's a time of change. So we're going to get into what the fourth dimension is and what it's composed of, um, and um, we'll go from there. We'll see what, what where that carries us. And here's Carl to start it off. Hey, I hope that you had a good day yesterday with the new moon. It was in our house, it was, <laughs> uh, it was challenging, all right? So anyway, the fourth dimension, what is it? It is not only a time of rapid change, it is a time of rapid change because uh, up to this, uh, I'm going to say the early part of the, or the middle of the 1930s, uh, the Earth and humanity were functioning at a consciousness level of the third dimension. And the third dimension is based on fear, a limitation, and a separation. And then starting in the, the mid-1930s, we began to shift, and we were in a 150-year transition period which encompasses the fourth dimension and will in uh, 2000 and the mid 2080s, the third dimension will have been gone, will be gone. But in the fourth dimension, we're functioning uh, in with the third dimensional energy, the fourth dimensional energy and the fifth dimensional energy. We're shifting from the third to the fifth, but to get there, we have to go through this 150 years of energies that are at different frequencies trying to understand each other and get along with each other. And that's the reason for so much confusion, conflict, division, because we've got people here, particularly the younger ones who are coming in with more of the fifth dimensional consciousness and very little of the third dimensional consciousness. And they're coming into a world that uh, it, it, it still has a lot of third dimensional energy, values, beliefs, behaviors, all right? And they're not comfortable with that. And, and on the other hand, the, the, the fifth dimensional energies that they are either bringing in, the, the, the ones that are, are predominantly third dimension aren't comfortable with, that, with them, <laughs> okay? So it's a time of rapid change, and the fifth dimensional beings uh, are giving the opportunity for the third dimensional beings to grow. But in order to grow, they have to be open. They have to be receptive. They have to want to grow. And the growth that's being attained, there's very little on the physical level, although the fifth dimensional people do have slightly different DNA, and I'm going to call it a little advanced, uh, advanced form of DNA. So there, there are physical changes taking place. And for, for, for us older ones who were born in, you know, uh, uh, let me say the, 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 the mid to uh, the late uh, uh, 19 uh, or the 20th century, wow. And the light workers who were born in that period here, they're coming in with some fifth dimensional energy and having to deal with all of these third dimensional people. It, it, it's, it's, it's hard. It's challenging. And then also, uh, we came, came into a, a fully, uh, third dimensional or mostly third dimensional frequency world. And our bodies don't fit here because we have some fifth dimensional energy in our bodies. And as the, the energy shift from the third to the fifth dimension, and, and let me tell you, the, the earth, the planet itself, 
based on channel information, is already entered the lowest level of the fifth dimension. And the, the, the third dimensional beings are, you know, it's, wow, you know, it's challenging for them. And 2012 was the midway point between the third and the fifth dimension. So since 2012, we have a, a more fifth dimensional energy, and that's continuing to grow. And each day, the, the amount of third dimensional energy is beginning to fade. And so we've got all of this third dimensional, and I'm just going to call it crap, all right? Things that are based on fear and limitation and separation that are now coming to the surface to be dealt with. And it's coming from our governments, from our economies, from our religions, and, and, and all of the major institutions created by humans. And <laughs> for some it can be scary, but please, 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 do not, do not allow yourself to go into fear. Recognize that what is coming to the surface is, is, being, com is being surfaced so that it can be changed. All right? And uh, do not give it any power, please, to help bring the fifth dimensional energy into your life and into the co collective consciousness of humanity and into the world. Focus on what it is you want. Do not give focus or energy or emotion to what you don't want. By giving your energy to it, you're strengthening it, all right? You are a creator, as all of us are. So create and focus your energy so that you're creating what you want for yourself, your family, your community, and so on. So the fourth dimension, our bodies have to adjust. Our thoughts have to adjust. Our beliefs have to adjust. Our emotions have to adjust. Wow, that's a plateful. That's, it's, it's an extraordinarily challenging time to be here because we are the ones, we who I, by that I mean the light workers, are the ones that are grounding this higher dimensional energy that we're not only, the earth is not only moving into in the photon belt, and moving into in the by going into the Aquarian age, but <sighs> these higher energies are affecting everything on the planet and everything within us. Okay, Orkin, do you have anything here? I have a couple things I'd like to have you make some. I'd like your thoughts on this. Um, so you met, you're saying that the Earth is already at the lower level of the fifth dimension. Yes. So um, if that's the case, is it even necessary for us to be involved in the planet's progression? Yes, it is. Though the Earth still needs help, it does not want to stay at the lowest end of the fifth dimension. It wants to move up. And as we're helping to ground this higher frequency energy being sent into the Earth from many, many star systems in our galaxy and also throughout the universe uh, we are the ones that are grounding much of this energy and, and our job is to help ground it into the earth but our primary energy is to ground it into the collective consciousness of humanity and we do that by grounding it within ourselves and then through ourselves through our aura our words our actions uh, helping to ground it in the people around us. Okay. So yes, we are, uh, they say, we're, we're the boots on the ground. We're the ones that, that, are, that are grounding this into the planet and into the human consciousness. Well, I'm just wondering, is uh, planet Earth, is it, uh, is it falling behind? Or are we, how are we aligning with the rest of our universe, our solar system, for instance? Are we... Is this one of our issues, is that we need to get booted up and get up, uh, get with it? That's a good question. And the history is, we are one of the, I'm going to call it laggard planets. And we are a laggard because for how many tens of thousands of years have we been controlled by dark forces, dark beings? 
the, the, the Anunnaki, the reptilians, etc. Okay? And they had technology that, that they used to veil the Earth off from the rest of the galaxy and universe. And it, 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 it was only, uh, I don't know, fairly recently, and I, I don't know what that exactly what that means, but that the forces of light had developed technology that could penetrate that, that shield that, that, that the Illuminati and, and Anunnaki and so on had, had created. So now that that's been penetrated, we, we're playing catch up. And, and they're pouring all kinds of, of, of energy into us to raise us up as quickly as possible. And they're trying an experiment here, which has never been done any place in the universe. Heretofore, ascension has always been one person at a time. And that's the only way it's been here on the planet. People who attained a sainthood did it on their own through working diligently, faithfully, uh, through a number of, of consecutive lifetimes, okay? And that's the way it's done, has been done throughout the universe. Only they haven't had the, the, the obstacles created by the dark that we have had. So they're trying an exhilarated method here, and that is uh, ascending an entire planet with all of the life forms on it together. And this has got the attention not only of, of, of the entire universe, but even other universes. And we're told that there are literally millions, millions of ships, uh, uh, UFOs, if you will, here to observe. And many of them are here to participate, all right? Uh, if at any point life becomes threatening on the Earth because of Earth changes, we will be beamed up to these ships, all right? And, and our growth there will be greatly exhilarated because we will be in the presence of higher dimensional beings. And then when the earth has settled back down, then we will come back to the earth and, and, and with already having then a fifth dimensional consciousness that we all have gained while we were up in these ships. You know, we talk a lot about dimensions. We talk about going through different d dimensions of, of uh, reality. Then the other term that um, is used quite often is densities. Um, can you explain what the difference is between dimensions and densities? No, good question. Um, Owen Waters prefers the word density. The higher the dimension, the less the density. The lower the dimension, the greater the density. Uh, we, with our five senses, are able to perceive the five, uh, uh, the densities or the dimensions one through five. When you in the sixth dimension, we we can't we, we it's beyond our five senses, and a part of the fourth dimension is beyond our senses too. The fourth dimension, uh, I don't know if it's unique or not. But it has a, a dense aspect to us that our five senses can see. And it has an, an another aspect that's made not out of the electromagnetic energy that we can see and perceive, but it's, it's made out of etheric energy, which we cannot see with our five senses. And the an interesting point is that you and I are made out of both the high uh, invisible fourth dimensional etheric dimension or etheric energy and the, 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 the physical energy that is visible. And I say that because no one's ever seen a thought or an emotion, but yet that is the essence along with our soul of what we are. Okay. So our thoughts, our emotions, our soul, are made out of something other than electromagnetic energy. And we, be, we refer to the, the energy they are made out of as the etheric energy. So, okay, to answer the question, <laughs> um, the astrophysicists have said that the only way our universe can exist in its current form is if it has 11 different layers. And each layer is made out of 
an energy within a given frequency range. And those are referred to as dimensions. But because the, the, the density, the frequency of the energy determines the density of the matter that the, the, uh, 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 that level of the universe is made out of, it's also called, it's called dimensions and it's called density and they're exactly the same thing. They're just referring to different aspects. Uh, different aspects of, of what a dimension or a density is. Okay, so what is that? In, in that fourth dimension, you know, you're, you're talking about the fourth dimension. Okay. And what, what is that really made up of? It's, it's made up of a combination of a third dimensional energy, which again is fear, limitation, and separation, and a fifth dimensional energy that is made up of love, peace, and unity or at one It's the combination of those clashing together that creates the confusion and the transition and the growth, the rapid growth and change that occurs in the fourth dimension. Now, are there different, um, I've, I've heard it said that you're functioning in the etheric level also in the fourth dimension, or is that incorrect? That's correct. And we, we talk about our heart and our high heart. Okay, our, our heart is part of our physical body, but at the same time, our high heart is made out of the etheric energy, which is a high fourth dimensional energy. And I, I'm expecting that in the fifth dimension, we will be more uh, etheric energy and less electromagnetic energy. There will still be the combination, and we, we know that there's, because we can still, our five senses can still see it. But when we move into the sixth dimension, there will be no electromagnetic energy in us or in our environment. It will be all etheric energy and perhaps a yet higher form of energy. Some thinking, um, they're saying that the third dimension is also truly, you know, you keep saying it's the fear separation and what else, Carl? Third dimension. Well, anyhow, there, but it also, it is also a time of free will. So, uh, you know, you, you focus quite a bit on the negatives, you know, the fear, the separation, the... Uh, free will is present throughout the universe on all dimensions. And how we use our free will is determined uh, or is influenced by the dimension that we're in. The third dimensional beliefs, are, for example, are, are uh, in, a, in a religion are, are quite different than the, the, the fifth dimensional beliefs, okay? And in reading the Bible, you can read it from a third dimensional consciousness, as some uh, churches do, or you can read it from a fifth dimensional consciousness, which some other churches do, and you'll get completely different meanings out of, out of the same story. Well, that's true. I want to ask another question that you have said that we are, we have people um, functioning on the uh, third dimension. And also on the fifth dimension here on this third dimensional plane, is that correct? Well, I don't, I wouldn't express it that way. We are all a combination. Mm -hmm. Okay, what percentage of your, of your time are you in the fifth dimension? What percentage of your time are you in the third dimension, the fourth dimension? And in doing live script readings for about 25 years now, the shift here is, is dramatic. It, it, it was uh, uh, 25 years ago. Uh, people were in, in the, the fifth dimension only, you know, 10% was considered, wow, that was high. Whereas now it's, it, it, it's, it's 35 to 42% of their time is in the fifth dimension. And the third dimension, it used to be about one third of the time was spent in the third dimension. It, it, and now it's 10 to 12%. Okay, 
Uh, the fourth dimension, the dimension of, I'm going to say, change or transition, of shifting from the third to the fifth dimension, that's, that's been fairly steady, roughly uh, 50% plus 5% five, five either way. So uh, is the fourth density or fourth dimension, is that where um, we are actually learning lessons on love? That's where we're learning more, uh, to love more totally and completely. And in the fifth dimension, that will be a primary motive for all that we think, say, and do. Okay. Is the, the fourth dimension, is it still a physical dimension? Both the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth dimensions are physical, yes. Okay. Now, a majority of the universe is beyond our five senses. Um, and when I say a majority, the, the, the astrophysicists are saying about 97% of the universe is beyond the perception of our five senses. It's, it's made out of what they call dark matter and dark energy. So we have so, so much more that we can learn and, and so much more growth that we can achieve in this universe. It's mind boggling. Okay, so are you saying then that the fifth dimension is... Uh specifically like half physical and half made up of the higher energies? Okay, a dimension covers a range of frequencies. And so that the more you go into the, 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 to the higher frequencies of the fifth dimension, yes, the more your consciousness and perhaps your physical vehicle will be made out of more etheric energy and, and less electromagnetic energy. That, that's my supposition. I don't know that, but I, that to me, it, it, it makes logical sense. Okay, so uh, if we, okay, you had mentioned earlier that the ones that were, were here were at the third dimension, and then you, you said that they're ones that were coming in of the fifth dimension, right? In our, I'm going to say in our lifetime. It's really been longer than that. It's been transitioning for many, many eons of time. But now when you're talking the fifth dimension, are they uh, the ones that you refer to as the crystal indigo children? Yes, they're the ones that also are referred to as light workers. But uh, all, virtually all of us are a combination. We aren't just one. A crystal or indigo, we're not functioning just on the fifth dimension or the third dimension. We're a, we're a mixture, we're a combination, we're a blend. And the trend is that we're, we're, we're moving so that we're spending less of our time in the third dimension and more in the fifth. And it's a process. And, and, and from moment to moment, we can jump from one dimension to another in our thinking or in our feeling. Okay. So these people that are that are coming in with this advanced DNA that we we kind of label as indigo crystal energy, uh, they're a mixture, but they're coming in with a slightly different DNA, which allows them to to be more comfortable on the planet. Uh, when I was born in 1936, and, and uh, prior to that, there was you know maybe only one percent of the human population was carrying this advanced DNA. And, 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 and the, the mid-1930s, it be, began to increase, maybe 2 3% when I was born. And so I have just a little bit of crystal indigo energy. But as time has gone on uh, and the frequency of the earth has increased, more of the people carrying this advanced DNA, this higher level of consciousness, have come in because it wasn't so threatening. It wasn't so uncomfortable. Uh, it's still uncomfortable, yes, but not nearly as much as it, as it is for, for us, us older people because we came into what was basically a third dimensional planet carrying some, and, and so uh, we stayed asleep, okay, until we were ready to, to begin to deal with 
the, the energy and the people that were here. So, okay, we talk about the uh, indigo and crystal children and, the, and those energies, and the indigos are able to come in and be able to settle here earlier than the crystals because of the energy that the crystals have. They were of a lighter nature, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, okay. So um, now, Carl, you know, when he does a life script reading, he checks that out and how much um, of the time and whether you you spend in the different energies, but also if you're crystal or indigo and how much of that you carry. Now, Carl had mentioned, you know, we don't have, Carl and I do not have very much crystal indigo energy, but when we, you were dowsing on us, there, there was this thing called new energy. Can you explain that? The new energy is a high frequency energy. And I can't tell you, because I don't know, whether it encompasses the crystal and indigo energy or not. But those of us that uh, that are, are older, uh, um, we could outgrow uh, the amount of indigo crystal energy that we had. And to help us do that, they were infusing us with what, what we simply refu- refer to as a new high frequency energy. All right, and uh, that really allows us to do what it is we're doing. And uh, we're so grateful for it. Without it, gosh, we just wouldn't wouldn't have achieved the, the spiritual growth that we've been able to achieve. Well, it's getting close to our time. So is there anyone that has a question or a comment? I think that everyone is just listening intently. There are so many changes and things in flux all the way around the world and um, understanding that what we see in the physical world is just a portion of what's going on uh, all around us because we do need to take into consideration the unseen or the spiritual worlds as well. Yes. Yes, that's so true. And I think that that's one of the things that it's really hard for us because living here on this um, earth plane, it looks like all this stuff is going on around here and it seems like it's just unending. It's been going on forever. But yet in the spirit realm, there's lots of activity that's going on also. And that's where all of us uh, come in because we're adding the energy of the new creation that is being built on that spirit realm, which will manifest itself you know, when the time is right, when, when everything's balanced just perfectly, then it's all of a sudden there's going to be. Uh, what do you think about that? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. So. Yeah, Dana, I appreciate your comment because I, that, to me that's very, very true. Mm-hmm. I think that the time that we're here, we've all, first of all, we've all volunteered to be here at this time and to put up with everything that we're, we're having to endure. But we're here to, to, to because we are needed. And um, I want to say thank you for being here. And please, please do not go into fear. Stay positive. And, and, and to the extent, the greatest extent that you can, stay in a state of love for yourself and for, for everyone and everything. Okay. And the other thing that I want to comment on again, and I say this uh, many different times, is that, you know, it sounds like the light workers are an exclusive bunch, but truly light workers are everywhere. They're in every walk of life. And they don't even, they don't have that title. We don't really need that title. But they're, they're, they're all, the ones that are light workers are ones that are here to make this be, uh, place better. And You can see in your family's uh, lineup, you know, from generation to generation, how there was always that sense of we want our children to be better. That was that was the way it was expressed earlier on. But, you know, now we know we want the whole world to be better. Third dimensional uh, thinking was we want our children. We want just, you know, our small group to be better. But when you come into the um, higher way of thinking, the more the fifth dimensional way of thinking, is we want the planet to be better. We want the planet to become 
you know, at one with all that there is. It's called we're developing a planetary consciousness instead of a, a personal or a local a level of consciousness. Hey, I want to say thank you. We're out of time. So thank you for joining with us. I hope this was helpful. If there's any way we can be of service to you, you can contact us uh, on our website, our ourspiritualascension.com. And uh, our blessings to you. I just also want to mention that we do have a site. It's a, we have a Patreon site. It's www.patreon.com slash Ortrun and Carl Franklin. And there uh, we offer some, a special um, half-hour show for the individuals that are members on a monthly basis to focus focus on the month and focus together so we can create together. And then there are other different um, things that come up, uh, special areas, um, for instance, some discounts and so on and various things. So check that out, and uh, it would be wonderful if you wanted to join that. That would be a wonderful way for us to be getting together again once a month. So, uh, again, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we are really fortunate that you are with us. So thanks again so much. Have a wonderful month. Yes, happy July to you. Happy July 4th. Bye-bye now.